Welcome everybody. Time to pray. Glad you're here. I'd like to make sure that you know that there is a link on the website for the prayer guide. That would be a helpful thing for you to have. Also, we have been going through a book together in this format, and the book has been Pray With Your Eyes Open by Dr. Richard Pratt. We're a decent way into this book. We've been doing prayer meeting this way for a while. I'm putting that book just off to the side for this time, and I am bringing forward this book. So if you have this book, this is the Bible. It might be good if you would go get that a moment, and if you would turn to Matthew chapter 5. The recent history is such that we understand there are particular needs. Ongoing, been here for a long time, have come to light. Now, we're recording this real early, but I am referring to the protests, the civil unrest, the riots that are coming as a result of the death of George Floyd. And I'm speaking to the church and we are here to pray. And so it would help us, I think, to know who we are as the church who are here constituted to at least pray. And that's why I have us in Matthew chapter 20, sorry, Matthew 5 tonight. Oh, go to Matthew chapter 25, though, after you're done praying and just read that one through. But we're going to Matthew chapter 5. This is Jesus at the onset of his earthly ministry, and he begins to teach. And we have learned this, or we have called this for the last uh, number of centuries, the Sermon on the Mount. So for those who would belong to God as his children by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, this then will describe us. We will be indwelt by his spirit. His spirit will produce the fruit of the spirit in the lives of his people who have had hearts changed from hearts of stone to hearts of flesh. So even as we have the high privilege of praying as Christians, we understand that there is still need for revival. There are those who do not have those hearts yet changed. And so who is the church that is here occupying the earth in Jesus' name as his body? Well, let us hear this and understand that it must describe us as the church, but the only reason it would describe us as the church is because it describes him who is our Savior and Creator. And here we go, Matthew chapter 5. And he, that is Jesus, opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Two more verses. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I took some liberty. I want a few more verses. Simply and understanding as we go forward this evening in prayer, there are some very heavy and yearned for promises there in the beginning of the Sermon of the Mount where Jesus puts forward his kingdom's values, among them righteousness and justice and comfort for the morning. And he is making the promises that these yearnings, these Pains will be met, will be satisfied. 
It is important that we understand at the onset of that sermon that he opened his mouth. Nobody else can promise things like this. Nobody else can work this except Jesus. And so we must hear this from his mouth and we must hear it as applied to his people. And again, by his spirit, how great is our God and how gracious and how kind and how merciful to call the likes of us unto himself and to pay for us with the blood of Jesus. And then to call us to go ahead and pray in his name as those who now are meek and understand what it is to be made meek, who are humble and understand what it is to be made humble and who would seek to be no other thing because to be something else would mean we don't belong to Jesus. And we do. And so then, lest we think that we are free to sit and wait for Jesus to accomplish all of it. Now he has, don't hear me wrong. And lest we think that we are free to sit and pray, and that's all. And we are to sit and we are to pray. Don't get me wrong. But we are also called to action. If we look at our Savior, he is marked up bad. Why? Because he wasn't words only. He has got wounds from top to bottom. He bears these scars forever. And that is a glory to God. And that is our comfort and a great comfort, our greatest comfort that he was one who would speak the truth, but also act in accordance with it. And so when he tells us we are the salt of the earth, how did we become the salt of the earth? He made us the salt of the earth. Salt is an active agent. Thus, his people ought to be active agents. So when we are praying, a bit of our prayer or a view of our prayer ought to be what then is required of me. The individual Christian. What then is required of us, the church, corporate? When we are called, when we are named by Jesus as the light of the world, well, how did we become the light of the world? He made us the light of the world. What does the light do? It's an active agent. It shines. It's not to be hidden. And so as we are praying, and this is integral and this is foundational and this must not be skipped for those who would go into action apart from prayer they are the ones who then ought to i would hope have many praying for them but as jesus own ministry shows he prayed and then he acted and as he lines up now his people the church to act he also lines us up to pray and we will do both in his name we will pray and we will act So let us then go into a time of prayer, praying as his own, that his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, knowing that we are active agents to carry out that will in his strength, in his power, according to his guidance, his leadership, and that of the Holy Spirit. So prepare to be equipped. Prepare to be deployed. Let's pray. I'm going to walk us through how this has been going on and how this will be going on until it doesn't need to go on in this format any longer. There is a link on the church website for the prayer guide. If you go to that link and if you download the prayer guide and if you print the prayer guide, then you will receive something like this. You will have it in your hand and it is very helpful for the prayer meeting, whether we're doing it this way or whether we're doing it in person. So what I'm going to do now So I'm going to walk us through this prayer guide in sections. I'm going to explain each one very briefly, and then we're going to pause the video. We're going to spend time praying for those things, either ourselves or with those gathered around us or on the phone with us. And then we're going to proceed through the entire guide in that way. And that mimics what we do when we are praying together in person, and therefore what we do when we're praying together in this way. So let me begin with the first section. And by section, I mean leaf. So if you've printed this, it is a trifold, and I'm going to do the first one, which contains these units. It's, it's largely people. So we have our church leaders, both professional and the volunteer, the officers, etc., the Sunday school teachers. And we have people with particular needs, and those are listed next for our church members. But then we are also charged with praying for others. And so quite often we get requests to pray for loved ones, friends, families, co-workers, etc. And there is a section there for that as well. 
So let's pause the video at this time and pray through this portion of the prayer guide together. The next section is missions and missionaries. We are a mission-minded church. I mean that capital C, the entire church. I mean that lower KC, Neely's Creek Church. There are a multiplicity of mission fields and the missionaries on those fields that is listed in this section. Uh, online, we may need to take the names out. It doesn't stop us from praying for them. And most likely, if you are from Neely's Creek, you have a fair idea of who these people are. At any rate, it is upon us now to pray for the mission of the church and the missionaries on those fields across the face of this earth. Let's pray. Okay, the third section of the prayer guide has you needing to get a pen or a pencil because there's some interaction that needs to happen here. But there are three sections on this third uh, flap or section or leaf, and they are these. Uh, those who are living in assisted living or maybe a rehab facility, those are listed, and they do need our prayers. Then there is a prayer chain. That is also on the church website. If you have a need that you would like the church praying for, you can fill it in, and that will go out on a church-wide email. So any prayer requests that come in during the week make it to this portion of the prayer guide. And so we are faithfully going to be praying each week for those needs. And then the last section is for non-believers. And that's where your pen or your pencil comes in handy. You need to sit down and before the Lord put down these names of those who do not believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, uh, as the Son of God, the Savior of sinners. Well, for that to happen, God needs to change the heart. That is not something we can do um, to the great chagrin of this pastor and I'm sure pastors everywhere. However, we are not only able to pray, we're charged to pray. So let us do that again. Let's pause the video and pray further on into the evening together. On the back now. And it's either the fourth leaf, if you have started on the front and moved to the back, or if you're starting on the back, it's the first leaf. And there are, again, three sections here. The first one is one that needs your pencil to still be sharp, hopefully, um, or your pen to still have ink in it. And these are additions to the prayer list. We don't pretend that this prayer guide is exhaustive. It's quite an array, and that shouldn't be a surprise. And that can be quite satisfactory to somebody who would set themselves to pray. But here are the additions. You know what they are. Put them in here and make sure that they, each one of them get prayed for. Then we have events at this time. There aren't many, but one of the, um, ooh, I'll just stop. We're going to use this multiple times. So events, if something's going on or pray that something will be going on if it isn't. And then lastly here are special concerns. Make yourselves familiar with these. Pray them through as well. Let's pause the video again and spend some more time in prayer. Okay, last section, and it's the back flap middle. And there are, again, three portions, three sections here. One is entitled Other. So we're fanning out. This is broad. This is big. This is very important for us to be praying for. So whatever those other requests are, let's pray through those. And that's followed by our nation and state. So there you have listed uh, offices, some of them very, very high, the names of those who occupy those offices, and then right on down through the military services. And then finally, those who we would know by name who are serving in the military. So it's a significant section. It's the final one as far as this prayer guide is concerned. Don't let it limit your prayers. This would be considered our basic uh, coverage having prayed this prayer guide through. So thank you so much for being a part of this ongoing ministry that is prayer. Bless you as you carry on. Let's pray. <clears throat> 